This is Honey Badger Nation, where real estate agents from around the globe come together to grow, collaborate, and expand their business. Where we take our individual fires and put them together and make one big fire. This is the Honey Badger Nation. All right, we are live. Uh, what's up, everybody? I'm Chase Fraser with EXP Realty, and I'm here today to speak with uh, Cody Jurgens, a good buddy of mine. We've known each other for a few years now. Um, so today we're going to talk about, you know, what's the difference between buying uh, a regular resale property versus buying new construction. And Cody's the perfect person to talk about that because he's got experience in both. So he's going to let us know, you know, like what are the pros and cons of what's going on with that. Um, so, uh, you, you know, he'll share with us the good, bad and the ugly of uh, being an agent in both areas. A little bit about Cody. Um, he's a real estate investor and an agent himself in the Portland area. And he's also an ultra marathon runner, which is if Cody, you'll tell us when I can't remember. I think you've run a couple hundred mile races, which is bananas to me. Uh, he's pretty passionate about travel, photography and uh, new experiences. Spends a lot of uh, his time training his body and mind uh, through consistent and disciplined action. So it's uh, it's pretty incredible the stuff that he's done and uh, out of body experiences he shared with me. So um, Cody, I hope that uh, does you some justice. But before we really get started, tell us a little about a little bit about you and where you're at these days. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Thanks for the kind intro. Um, you know, I'm I'm here in the Portland area, I'm continuing my real estate journey in new construction right now. Um, as you mentioned, seeing, you know, both sides of things um, and, you know, the different processes and different opportunities. Um, so continuing that real estate journey, um, you know, continuing my training for um, some marathons and ultra marathons coming up. Um, so really trying to, uh, you know, build that professional side and personal side you know through my body and mind and uh just continue to stay sharp continue to keep pushing and i really find above all else you know being able to you know go to bed each day and know that you know i move the needle forward in those different areas of my life that's really the most important thing to me you know in business um, in my personal life uh, with my health relationships things like that so really trying to just keep it pushing forward um, in all those different kind of pillars of my life. Um, but yeah, just doing good. Um, happy to be here. Yeah, man. Happy to have you here. Um, yeah. you know, some of the stuff hearing you talk about running ultra marathons and trying to qualify for the Boston Marathon, that's insane to me. Um, and we could talk Definitely. about that all day. But, um, you know, let's, I guess we're here to chat about real estate. It's what we both do professionally. Um, how did you get into real estate? Definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, short, short answer is by accident. Um, long answer <laughs> is a, a, a really long story of a bunch of different experiences. So it really all started um, my senior year in college at the University of Oregon. Um, you know, I went through school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do exactly. Um, I knew I wanted to be successful, right? Or, you know, accomplish these goals that I had, but I didn't really know how I was going to get to doing that. Um, you know, so it wasn't until my senior year in college that I started looking around the campus and noticing all of the big multifamily uh, apartment units that we were all renting from around the campus. And I was thinking to myself, like, huh, like, you know, this is a, this must be a good opportunity um you know all of our parents co-sign for us as students all of those rents are paid you know on the month on the day and never late and i'm like thinking to myself you know this is you know a good opportunity um this real estate thing i don't really know anything about anything at that time that was just kind of the first spark so i actually showed up at the office for the property management company that was managing the big building that I was living in. Um, and, you know, I walk in there and I asked if I could speak with the owner of the company because I wanted to learn how to do real estate. 
And the lady there at the front desk kind of looked at me like I was a little crazy um, and said, yeah, he's out, you know, looking at properties, um, you know, doing some business. And I was like, OK, that's fine. I'll wait until he gets back. Um, so so I ended up sitting that first day in their lobby on this old leather couch for about three hours um, until his name was Bill Sirius until he came back to the office. Um, you know, he walked in the door and was surprised to, to see some naive young student sitting there telling him that he wants to learn about real estate. Um, so it took a couple more times of me showing up at their office for Bill to end up being like, hey, yeah, you can come um, essentially intern and work for free um, and, you know, learn the process of what they were doing at the time was uh, buying properties, rehabbing them, refinancing them, and renting them out. So that Burr strategy uh, is what I ended up learning from them at the University of Oregon. And that's really what started the whole journey. And, you know, from there, um, you know, a bunch of ups and downs and, and getting to the point where I'm at now. But it was an interesting start. Um, and I was just full of energy and just wanted to you know, learn about, you know, real estate, how to buy it, how to invest in it. Um, and, you know, that led to a bunch of more opportunities, but that was, that was the beginning of it. Nice. Yeah. And then, yeah. so there's a, there's a transition into getting your license and then helping people buy regular resale um, real estate. And then you're now into new construction real estate. So, Yep. Um, you know, tell us what's the difference between someone who's looking to buy a property when they're looking at new construction versus regular resale? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So as I transitioned out of there, um, you know, I ended up getting my license as I moved back to the Portland area um, and, you know, went into the resale world for a few years, um, you know, learned many things about that. Like you said, ended up in new construction. And really being on both sides, there's there's some big differences, um, you know, both on the process side in terms of how transactions are done, um, as well as, you know, working on both sides and kind of the different opportunities, you know, um, that come with each side. So, um, you know, when you're when you're in new construction, you know, obviously you're getting a home built, right? It's a longer escrow time, you know, usually in that six to 12 month time frame um, where you're waiting for your home to be built. Whereas in resale, you're dealing with, um, you know, a used home that's, you know, standing there ready to be moved in. Usually those transaction times are, you know, 30, 60, 90 days, a lot less, right? A lot less. So that time frame difference is huge in terms of the process. Um, you know, it's very different in terms of the inspection windows um, as well. So really trying to educate people that do come from the resale world and are new to new construction, um, you know, how those differences line up just so they can have the right expectations. Like, for example, you know, when you're when you're in resale, you have usually like a seven to 10 day inspection window at the beginning of the transaction to do some due diligence. Um, that's not necessarily there in new construction because a lot of times the home is either um, it's at some point of the construction process. So there's nothing really to inspect until the end of the transaction. So, um, you know, some differences there, you know, coaching, you know, agents and clients that are new to it. Um, and, you know, getting once, you know, once we kind of set those expectations and and you know get everyone to understand the different timelines and different processes um you know it, it usually ends up pretty smooth but it's just quite quite different in terms of um you know resale versus the new construction side also wanted to mention too um in terms of working on both sides as well um you know you are i mean for me you know i've worked for a couple of the biggest national builders so um that's where my experience is on the new construction side and 
I, uh, I really saw that opportunity when um, inventory was starting to shrink on the resale side. It's still really tight right now in the Portland market. Um, and, you know, you look at where is the inventory? That's what I asked myself when I was working at Keller Williams and some of the resale partners. Um, you know, I was asking myself, where's the inventory? And the inventory a lot of times is coming back to um, these larger national builders that have large communities that are building hundreds of homes at a time. So um, on the sales side of things, working on it, that's where I saw that opportunity um, in being able to, you know, take advantage of that additional inventory. Got it. Got it. So then you're mentioning inventory um, and yeah, it's certainly pretty tight in all Definitely. areas right now. Um, and we've helped a couple buyers buy new construction and it's, it's, it's kind of nice where we, you go in, you submit an offer and a lot of times it's accepted on the spot. So that can right. be like a pro of it. So like, tell us about some of the pros and cons of new construction. Definitely, definitely. Well, that is definitely one of them. Um, you know, being able to walk in, um, find a lot that is available and purchase it right then and there. Uh, many times on the new construction side, we aren't dealing with multiple offer situations that are very frequent on the resale side. Um, you know, so that that competition and, you know, running up of prices and maybe possibly running into appraisal issues is definitely less frequent on the new construction side. Um, so that definitely is, you know, a sales tool to explain to buyers and agents coming through like, Hey, you know, we have this, this, and this lot available. Um, and you know, the price is the price. We're not dealing with multiple offer situations that really lets a lot of people's guard down. Um, is definitely a pro um, for new construction. A few other things um, just from, you know, me working on that side, you know, just just the consistency, you know, your transactional experience, um, you know, for anyone looking to get into real estate, having the ability to do many transactions in a year, um, you know, 50, 100 transactions in a year, that is gold. You know, that is really gold. Um, and yes, you do, you do take a hit in your per door commission usually. Um, but that transactional experience is definitely that something that is, is invaluable. Um, you know, um, a few kind of on the opposite side, a few cons, you know, are that really the lack of control and kind of entrepreneurial spirit that a lot of us real estate agents, um, and people in the real estate world have. Um, being able to work more within a structure, within a company, within an organization um, and, you know, take it's a give and a take. Right. It's a give and a take always, um, you know, so um, yeah, just that that creativity that you may have in transactions, being a resale agent um, is, you know, toned down a little bit when you are working for especially a bigger company that is building a lot of homes. Um, you know, so it's, it's a give and a take. There's, there's good opportunity. Um, and there is some, some drawbacks. There's really like you, I truly believe you can be successful in whichever avenue that you decide. Right. Um, you know, it's all about just being consistent, um, and really not giving up, you know, so, um, pros and cons all the way around, um, really with anything you do, but opportunities all the way around as well. Totally. Totally. So, um, so you've got experience working on both sides. What do you kind of like learn from being on both sides that you can use as being an agent moving forward? Um, and maybe what, what would you do differently in your journey? If anything? Definitely. Yeah. Good question. Definitely. Um, honestly, I'm, of the belief that I wouldn't have done anything different. Um, now that I'm looking back on it, yes, there is a lot of moments where I could have saved a lot of time and a lot of stress. But at the end of the day, I, I do believe that you have to go through it in order to get to it, right? Um, so uh, yeah, this is a very powerful um, 
line right there. Um, you know, you can you can have um, all the tools in your tool belt. You're still going to make mistakes. Um, you're still going to go down paths that you look down later and are like, why did I do that? Why did I waste time, quote unquote, when, you know, looking at those wasted time moments as learning experiences, um, you know, so I really wouldn't have changed anything. I got into real estate um, just with high energy, wanting to learn, didn't know much. And I know a lot of people are the same. They see a good opportunity. Um, and it's really just about going for it. Um, it's really about staying consistent. It's really about not giving up. Those first few years, Chase, you know this, are brutal. Um, they really are. Like, the ups and downs, it really takes a toll on you. And that's why, you know, I don't know the exact stat on this, but there's, it's got to be a large majority of people who enter real estate end up quitting at some point within the first few years. Um, it's the 80 20 rule. Yeah, it's got to be, right? It's got to be. So I think that just staying persistent, staying consistent, um, building good habits, getting coaching. Um, you know, all of these things are key, but at the end of the day, you just have to, you do have to learn by experience at the same time. Um, you know, in, th in terms of like things that I learned, um, you know, it's, it's really, it's really just that it really just comes down to the mindset of it. Um, it really comes down to, you know, just being disciplined, being able to have a plan that you work through each day procrastination is the killer of all of your future success. It really is. And it's easy to procrastinate when things get tough. Um, so just a few things that I learned, obviously, yes, there's some um, kind of more specific, uh, you know, process oriented things, but the most important to me, I think is the bigger picture, uh, you know, mindset that goes around it and just keeping consistent, keeping disciplined and, and continue to push forward. Cool, man. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. it can be a roller coaster. You get some highs and some lows and right. um, it's, it's, I think you hit the nail on the head of, you know, consistency, discipline, sticking to a plan, coaching, uh, all that stuff is, is critical to, to success. So, well, Hey yeah. man, I appreciate you uh, coming on today. If someone wanted to get a hold of you and, and do some work with you, how would they do that? Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Thank you so much, Chase. Um, you know, just to mention real quick, I remember when we first met back um, a few years back, you were working at your previous brokerage. Um, you know, I think that we both sensed uh, a positive mindset, you know, between us two. So I'm really thankful for that friendship um, and everything moving forward. Yeah, me too, man. Um, you know, going forward, you know, um, CodyJurgens.com. That's definitely a place that you can reach me at. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of everything from my real estate to my, you know, side hobbies in photography um, and travel and all of that as well. Um, you can definitely reach me through all of my social media outlets. Um, Cody Lee Jurgens on Instagram, um, Cody Jurgens on um, Facebook, um, and all those links are are on the website and everything. So. Um, definitely, if if anyone is, you know, out there looking to, you know, learn more about real estate, looking to connect um, and, you know, really build um, your mindset and your outlook in life. That's something that is really a passion of mine as well. Um, you know, I'm here to definitely help anyone. I love I know, Chase, you feel the same way, but, you know, going through those experiences yourself. Um, and being able to share those with others and, you know, maybe save them a little time and headache along their journey is definitely something that's important. So totally. totally. Well, Hey Cody, uh, I really appreciate your time. And, uh, so we'll wrap this up now and I look forward to, uh, to catching up with you again in the future. I'll end the broadcast and we'll, uh, I'll catch up with you afterwards. Awesome, man. Awesome. Have a great day. Thank you so much. All right. See everybody later. All right. Bye.